The next pattern in the dealing with generalization series is, for entirely subjective reasons, one of my favorite refactoring patterns. And this one is called form template method. The motivation here is that you have two or more methods which perform very similar steps. More importantly, they perform them in the very same order, and the steps differ by some small, small measurements. So in this case, we have this customer object, which has these two methods, get statement and get HTML statement. And you can see that they do extremely similar things. Using a string builder, they'll create a, a header, they'll create a bunch of line items, and then they'll create this two-line footer. The same thing happens down here. A header, line items, and this two-line footer. And so the, the maintenance problem that you would see with something like this is what if we want to add more statements? Maybe we want to add something with images or something that formats in, in LaTeX instead of HTML. Then we would have to add more methods onto the customer object, and that's no good. So what we're going to do is create a separate object or an object hierarchy and give that a template method that we can use to create as many of these statement types as we'd like. So first, let's start off by creating our hierarchy. We're going to make the top-level class abstract. Just call it statement. For now, we just have our two implementations. Now we haven't changed anything yet. No real reason to run any tests yet. So the first thing we're going to do is move these methods from the customer object to these new statement objects. And then the customer's methods will just delegate to these objects. So let's start with the text statement. And of course, we'll need a reference to a customer. And then the text statement or the get statement method on the customer is just going to delegate to that text statement. Now this would be an opportune time to run all of our tests, of course. We haven't really changed anything yet, though. But we will also move this same method to the HTML statement class. And again, give it an instance of a customer. And then from the customer method here, delegate to the new object. And so now that we've moved all of this logic into these objects here, what we see is the ability to extract a lot of this logic into our abstract parent class. But first, we need to make these methods identical before we can pull them up to the parent. And so let's start extracting all of the things that are not identical. Let's call this get header. And while that Visual Studio tool makes it static, we don't want it to be static in this case. Then we'll have the same get header down here. Now we have this one, we'll call this get line item. And finally, we have this get footer. We 
which is actually two lines, but we can combine those into one. And just get rid of that second one there. And we'll do the same thing here. And since our refactoring is going so well, we're going to take a larger step here and not include the new line character. We know that in HTML we don't really need to. And so the output will be slightly different in the sense that there won't be a new line character here, but I think we're okay with that. And now we see that these two methods are entirely identical. And so first let's rename this one so that they're even structurally identical. Now we can pull those up to the parent. I forgot, this is an opportune time to rerun all of our tests, of course. So now let's, after those tests pass, pull this up to the parent. And now you see on the parent, we're going to need some references to these methods that we're calling. So first let's add those make them protected because the child classes need to override them but nobody else needs to see them. Oops. That needs to be abstract. Now that parent class is fine. And so we could do something like this on these child classes and run some tests, but again, I think our refactoring is going quite well, so we'll take the test-driven development approach to take larger steps here and speed up a little bit. And now these just need to be protected overrides. Otherwise, of course, the compiler would complain to, the, to us about that. And so now, this would be definitely an opportune time to rebuild and run any tests that we have. Oh, we did make a mistake here. Oh, because it was static. That should not be static. So it rebuilds now, and of course we'll want to run any of our tests. But essentially, this is it for the refactoring pattern here. We've taken all of this duplicated code and put it in one place and we just have these abstract references to methods where different implementations of a statement would have different functionality. For example, for the text one we have plain text and a new line and for the HTML one we have some formatted text and no need for a new line. Now while that's it for the pattern itself Let's take a moment and look at the benefits of this. Now right now we haven't changed customer at all. It still has this get statement and get HTML statement method. And so if we added new kinds of statements, for example a latex one, we'd have to add another method and change this customer object. And we didn't really want to do that. And the reason we went through this pattern was so that we would have this strategy of methods, uh, sorry, strategy of statements that we only really care about any given abstract version of it in something like our customer. So let's illustrate that. We might have this private statement object and this could get set through a constructor or through a setter somewhere. It could get set through some kind of internal logic. It doesn't really matter for the purpose of this. What does matter is that what we're going to do is replace both of these and any additional ones that have been added for other formatting with just a single method which instead of returning this new text statement or new HTML statement is going to return from the from the implementation that we've been provided. So now we no longer need this and now anytime we want to 
uh, we want to get a statement about a customer, we can inject a statement formatter implementation into the customer and get the statement from that using very abstracted code here. This allows us to add as many formatter implementations as we'd like without ever having to change the customer object because the customer object, its logic hasn't really changed. We're just adding another format. We might even just have this statement provided directly. and not worry about any kind of statement that's tied to that customer instance itself. So this gives us a lot more flexibility. That's pretty much it for the form template method pattern. Thanks for watching.